Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a beautiful 12th of August, 2020. Coming up in this week's podcast, I will be discussing the whole machete, hammer, and so-called misogyny that happened in Ottawa. All that and more. Stay tuned. Because I am hard, you will not like me. There is no racial bigotry here. Ladies and gentlemen, this podcast is brought to you by the folks at Rampage Coffee Company and the fine gentlemen at Canon Gold Corporation. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, 12th of August, 2020. And like I said in the title, there was a nasty machete hammer murder that happened in Red Deer. And uh, I guess Miss McKenna, Miss now Climate Infrastructure, Miss Barbie herself, have personally received more misogynistic remarks in her riding in beautiful Ottawa. So we'll start with the incident that happened in Red Deer. Apparently a man, 54 years of age, his name was Deng. I'll leave a, a link to the article uh, in the description there. Uh, Sudanese Canadian, I guess he was about 6'2", 54 years old. And I guess he walked into the private or the uh, open clinic in Red Deer. And he started slashing and hitting a doctor with uh, the tools in question. Now I'm not going to sit and speculate. I'm not going to put any kind of racial BS towards it. I'm not going to sit there and talk about immigration policies, nor am I going to sit and dissect uh, this person's background. It doesn't matter if he was white, pink, purple, black, peach, whatever color you want to identify. Here's an individual who had intent on doing something. And yet, the more articles I try to find out today, there's only one description that he was from Sudan, Sudan Canadian, Sudanese Canadian, 54 years old, he knew the doctor, and there was obviously some kind of tent with that. You, my listeners and viewers alike, I hope that you don't come to a racial conclusion, because that would not be fair, and that would feed the so-called narrative that's going on today, where everyone's looking for racism and looking for prejudice, and when it just sums up to be nothing but ignorance. Now, when I read that story, and when I saw some of the footage of said area uh, this morning on CTV Edmonton, I'm sitting with my wife and we're going, holy shit. Like, a terrible fucking crime. Really, a, a heinous fucking crime. <coughs> and the powers that be seem to keeping a lot of information at bay. So, um, whether your news source is through Rebel, TNC, uh, other social media platforms, or mainstream media and all that, I'm highly suggesting and I highly recommend that we all look at this through an open mind and an open lens. And not worry about the person's background. And not worry about the person's gender. Worry about the people that have been affected. That doctor won't get to see his two kids again. Or touch his wife again. That doctor won't be able to outreach with his patients. And you can see the patients confessing how much they loved and how much they respected the man. And a terrible fucking crime. And regardless if uh, the perpetrator was 54 years old, six foot two, or black or white or whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, the thing being, we don't know the whole details just yet, so please keep the racial profiling and racial bullshit to yourselves. I, for one, won't tolerate it. Um, you can criticize immigration policies, you can criticize um, certain cultural events or cr certain cultural upbringings, whatever, but we don't know the whole details yet, so I'm going to beg my listeners, please do not speculate and bring anything racial into this whatsoever. It's just devastating, and it's horrendous. Um, I myself, I've seen violence, what men can do to other men, and it's fucking horrendous. And I really feel for those people in Red Deer right now. And my condolences to his family and his friends and to all of his patients. My sincere condolences. Uh, I'm sorry that you had to live through that and see that and witness that part of human garbage. Um, but uh, I don't know what the story is about this guy. Um, all in all, he's from Sudan. He's been in Canada for some time, 54 years old. And based on some of the statements that you read in the stories that he had some kind of intent or some kind of issue. So I don't know. You know, this is nothing but speculation right now. But I hope to God they don't turn this situation like they did with the Danforth and the Nova Scotia where we have to hear two or three months later, 
what the story is or two or three weeks later what the story is you know anyway tell me what you think crusty canuck 67 at gmail.com or you can find me on twitter you can also find me on facebook and instagram you can also find me on parlay the new uh, substitute twitter and you can also find me in canon.com it's a new platform out there it's brought to you by the owners and operators of canongold.com one of my sponsors and they also have created a good website that's a nice safe alternative to facebook if you're getting tired of Facebook's uh, big tech shenanigans. So check them out too as well. Um, but carrying on with the cast here, I'm, I don't know what to say other, other than my speculation, what, I, what I've given to you earlier. I don't know what to say. We'll have to wait and see. You know, I'll leave links to the story. Uh, the Red Deer Times put something up. I think the Calgary Sun put something up. And I'll add additional links there in the description too from CTV and CBC alike. As much as I loathe using the CBC at times, but uh, they've actually started reporting some decent news stories. Of course, when you caught my last episode about the Governor General, everyone's stepping up and fessing up because, you know, she's such a bitch, apparently. And rightfully so, you know. You work for a bitch, well, what do you expect? And, you know, referring to working for a bitch as in two genders. I've worked for good people in my career, and I've worked for bad people in my career. And I'll be glad to call some of those bad people bitches. But, needless to say, you know, uh, we, we have to be a little more open-minded and try to be thorough. You know, let's try to be thorough about this. And if you like what you hear and see, ladies and gentlemen, by all means, please. Um, I've also received some news today, too. Um, my hours have been cut from my place of employment. So, things are going to be tight. So, if you feel like donating, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to solicit funds here. But I will ask, if you feel like donating, please do. Uh, please donate to any of the uh, links in my description. One, two, three, or four dollars. Uh, everything's greatly appreciated. And those individuals who have given to me thus far, thank you once again. Uh, those who do want to donate, feel free. And if you do, please consider uh, picking up some merchandise from my Teespring line. There'll be a link in the description of that as well. T-shirts, hoodies, mugs, leggings, socks, tank tops. And I even think I... Put together a bib for little kids too so if you want to give a little infant a nice crusty canuck uh, bib by all means <laughs> give it a shot anyhow carrying on with more of this uh, hammer and machete issue i really don't know what to say other than let's try to keep an open mind and let's try to be a deterrent from these violent these violent actions and these violent crimes um I can understand the economic downfall that's been going on, the frustration that people feel, especially with all this beer bug dilemma. Every other station is putting up more cases and more diagnosis of this and that, and oh my God, the chaos, and all these legitimate health experts and half-assed health experts are weighing in, telling us again what to do, what not to do. There's tickets being handed out for fucking social distancing and tickets for not wearing masks, and we're turning into a goddamn police state again. Which brings me to another little story that I saw today on the Rebel Media there about a young farm kid back on the 31st of July apparently was pulled out of his tractor by five sheriffs. Now, from the video I saw on the Rebel website, it honestly seems to me like those police officers were really in the wrong. You know, it adds more to creating emphasis and situational awareness and how to get things done and if you're going to see a threat every time you turn around then that individual has a problem now i'm not trying to disenfranchise any of the police officers i've met over the years and especially my police officer friends out there but i highly suggest uh, viewers and listeners alike please look at the video in my description and decide for yourself i for one think that the cops were way out of line pulling that kid out of the tractor literally throwing him on the tarmac and you can see footage of that kid being apprehended the way he was and held in custody for a couple hours. And just, oh, I don't know. I, I'm shaking my head here. I'm just like flabbergasted. But uh, fuck, I don't know what to say. Like I say again, tell me what you think. CrustyBCanuck67 at gmail.com or on Facebook under Krusty Canuck, Instagram under Krusty Canuck. You can find me on Twitter and you can find me in Parlay too. Or just send me an email. <clears throat> and I'll also leave an actual writing address too in the description. So if you feel like writing me a letter, the old, good old old school way, hey, that'd be appreciated too. Or if you want to send me some swagger, by all means, I don't mind at all. And I'm also working on designing a hockey jersey too. So if you want to check my poll out on YouTube there, my community page, 
feel free to vote and pick whatever name you want for the hockey jersey. Uh, the logo I'm working on is basically going to be the podcast logo, and it's going to be surrounded by said name. So pick a name you like, and we'll go from there. Uh, I'm going to probably close that poll probably in the next couple of weeks. I'll leave it up a little bit longer just to see, you know, because I, I would like to get more than 25 people to vote on it. So get out there and vote if you can, please, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, carrying on, uh, this whole misogyny debacle too. I guess uh, Climate Barbie, you know, <laughs> I know much he hates that name, or Infrastructure Barbie, or Mismanagement Barbie, or Mismanagement Climatized, whatever you want to call her, uh, has felt the so-called social blow of misogynist again, you know. And uh, <laughs> according to the video you can find in the Sun News too, Okay, now when you actually watch the man that walks up to the constituency office, rings the doorbell, and it gets answered by a staff member of the, uh, you know, of the McKenna crew there. He goes off on a tirade, basically saying, what are you doing with their money? What's going on? Why is there so many billions not for this infrastructure? You guys are deleted, corrupt. You guys are fucking terrible, blah, blah, blah. I don't recall him saying anything sexist or anything misogynistic in his little spiel. Now, granted, this individual might have had some bad taste. Maybe his motives were unclear. But like any other democratic citizen in this country, any taxpayer, any voter, any concerned Canadian, as far as I'm concerned, he was well within his fucking right to do what he did. Right? Really. He wasn't being misogynistic. He wasn't being sexist. It was just being a taxpayer. Anyway, here's a word from my sponsor. Rampage Coffee Company. Extremely delicious coffee. Roasted with purpose, then delivered to your favorite mug. Our delicious coffee comes packed with enough attitude to punch you out of your morning slippers. Here at Rampage Coffee Company, we provide you superior quality coffee that is delivered to the doorsteps of any Canadian who is ready to take their coffee game to the next level. We hand select quality beans to be a small batch roasted by our head roaster, which ensures unparalleled attention to details and amazing quality in all our coffee. Cheers to a freshly roasted kick-ass coffee. Rampage Coffee Company. Use the code CRUSTYCANUCK to get free shipping on the Rampage Sampler. This is Brian Boucher, the new CEO of Canaud Gold Corp. We have gold at 99% purity with discounts ranging from $100 up to $200 off the ounce. This is the right place to buy from two gram cards to 400 ounce bricks. We have any quantity of gold you are looking for. We also sell by the ton, not like your ex-wife. Visit us today at canadgold.com, C-A-N-U-N-D, gold.com. That's right, folks. You can reach the fine people at Rampage Coffee Company and at Canon Gold and my links provided. So, carrying on with the whole misogynistic issue of this podcast, really? Didn't Miss uh, McKenna make a statement about that back in October? I'm pretty sure I did a video on that, too, if you want to check my video history. I think I called it See You Next Tuesday or Thursday. I'm not sure. But uh, check it out for yourself and decide for yourself. Now, it seems like with all this we scandal and all this other bullshit going on with uh, the Canadian economy and our lackluster government, of course, the Prime Minister took another personal day without being in Parliament today. Gotta love that raise he gave himself back in April, right? Come to work whenever the fuck you want, whenever the fuck you please. And the same thing with half his fucking cabinet. Now, I, for one, you've heard me rant and rave about him and rant and rave about his party, but I'm getting sick and tired of female politicians in this country screaming sexism or screaming misogyny every time a man questions their ability or questions their integrity or questions their competence. Now, from my personal experience, okay, and I'm not going to say lived experience because I'm still alive, so I'm pretty sure I lived through it. Anyhow, when I fuck up and my supervisor happens to be a female, Does that mean she's being misandric if she chews me out for fucking up? No! She's being a supervisor. Right? She's being my boss. Right? So how is that any different than when someone is elected to represent their interests in said writing and doesn't matter what they are appointed to do 
When someone's going to question your fucking competence, your integrity, and your overall actions, how is that misogynistic? Right? To the ladies out there that are in these positions, I hope to God you earned them. Really. I hope to God you have what it takes to do the job, to do what's right, to do what's morally and socially right. Right? But Miss McKenna has proven herself to be unworthy, not because she's a woman or she's a mother, because she's incompetent. She toes the party line. She's given half-fast answers. She's been caught saying in a bar in St. John's, Newfoundland, oh, being in Parliament has taught me that if you say it loud enough and say it many, many times, people will believe it. What kind of leadership is that? We'll just talk down to our Canadian constituents. We'll just talk down to the Canadian people and everything will be just fine. Eh, wrong. Okay? You keep digging yourself in a hole, Liberal Party. You do. You keep digging yourself in the hole. And the, the only f fair thing that I can think of right now is have the audacity, bear with me, have the audacity to call another fucking election. Because the way things are stewing right now, especially out here in the West, a lot of people are getting fed up with the bullshit. They're getting fed up with the we issue. They're getting fed up with money going other places other than Canada or Canadian industry. Okay? You've okayed contracts for a couple of companies in Quebec to make masks that haven't been produced yet. You bet you complain about the 10% tariff on aluminum, which at least two-thirds of it is not made or mined in Canada. Okay? So, you're not being genuine. You're not leading the country to success. You're putting us in debt. You're taking money that doesn't belong to you. And you, you basically promote to the Canadian people, you just don't give a fuck. So the next time you scream misogyny or sexism, no one's going to believe you. You're crying wolf. Okay? And it's the same thing to the reporters out there that are making a big stink about uh, Kamala Harris down in the States. Okay? I don't know the whole story about her background. Not that it goddamn matters. But according to my American friends and some of the people that I've listened to recently, she's not qualified to be a VP. Well, because of her actions in the criminal world. and Because of her actions in criminal prosecution. Right? And is she, does she have what it takes to do the goddamn job? Or is it Joe Biden's fucking insight? Because he wants to win more votes and he's going to use her like a fucking doormat. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see come November when the Americans have their election. But uh, tell me what you think. CrustyBCanuck67 at gmail.com. Or you can find me on the Twitter. You can find me on Facebook. And find me at Parlay, too. I'll leave links in the description. If you do feel like donating, please donate uh, whatever you can. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and beg for cash. I'm not going to you know, sit there and try to sell bath water to you. I'm just a guy speaking his mind from the great fucking uh, true north. Strong and free. Hoo ah. Anyway, carrying on with all this misogyny bullshit. <clears throat> I, for one, know women personally that could do a hell of a lot of a better job than Miss McKenna, Miss Freeland, Miss Chagger, and anybody else in the Liberal Party right now. Because they come from good, strong, blue collar backgrounds. They also have a professional degree. There's a couple of people that I know personally. There are medical professionals that have spent the better part of 15 years practicing medicine and have a better solution and better ideas, far fucking more superior than Dr. fucking Tam ever was or ever had, and a hell of a lot more fucking qualified than Miss Haydu ever was. So I would sooner listen to those professionals than listen to the fucking boobs on the boob tube, right? Anyway, it, it just, it just, we're getting into a system that our personal liberties are being compromised every fucking day. Okay? And of course, there's some clowns on Twitter saying, oh, oh, this person bothered Miss McKenna because he's upset about the gun ban. Maybe he was, but when you look at the video, he didn't say anything about guns. He was saying, what the hell are you doing with our money? Where are all these projects that are supposed to be built? And how many billions of dollars have gone missing? or unaccounted for because of Miss McKenna's infrastructure projects, 20,000 jobs that are supposed to be done in the name of infrastructure, and there's no 
if and buts about it. Where is it? Where, what's going on with it? How many billions of dollars have gone missing? I think roughly $5 billion gone, and yet there's no proof where it is. It speaks for itself, right? The thing is, what I like to tell about some of these, what I like to say to some of these feminists is that you prove to me that there's rampant sexism someplace and let's you and I go fight it together. If there's no rampant sexism, then I guess it must be speculation or someone's feelings are hurt and somebody demands special treatment. Right? I was raised in a household where every girl has a chance. It doesn't matter where they come from. That's, that, that's a good thing that my mother instilled in me, that every woman is capable. And I agree. And I, I've worked with some fantastic women over the years. I have worked for, worked for some fantastic women over the years too. And they never pulled that card on me. They never used that as an excuse to get me to do a better job or to, to show up earlier or to do better. They instilled in me good values and outstanding fucking examples of how to be a good leader. Because they were there with the rest of us. They were there with the th- in the shit with us. So there are women out there that do a great fucking job because they have what it fucking takes. Just like there's men out there that do a great fucking job. Why? Because they have what it takes. Yeah. And there are lazy women and there are lazy men too. Right? Yes, men aren't always so perfect. We're not perfect, ladies. But guess what? Neither are you. So when a man calls on you for your actions, it's not misogynistic. It's not sexist. It's not a greeting. It's about being an adult. Okay? And taking responsibility and owning your shit. And I made that point very clear in that video I did back in October when someone spray penned the word see you next Tuesday on the wall of her office. Something to think about though, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Who are we putting in charge? Who was calling the shots? Right? We gotta stop being afraid to speak our minds. You know, when you look at that video, this man did not go up to that person and say, you better do my dishes and do my laundry and that's all there is to it. He didn't say that. He was questioning the office's integrity. He was questioning the credibility and the efforts that they're supposed to be making on behalf of the Canadian people. And he had every right to. So, think about that, folks. Anyhow, enough of my ranting on for this beautiful day. It has been... Well, it still is the 12th of August, 2020. I have been Krusty Canuck. Thank you once again to everybody who has contributed and helped me with donations thus far. And if you do feel like donating, please donate. Every little bit helps. And, uh, you know, if you feel like picking up some merchandise and some swagger, by all means, pick up some stuff from my Teespring line. I'll leave a link in the description there. And if you want to write me a nice letter or two or send me some swagger, I'll leave an actual handwritten (laughs) mailing address for you too. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I have been Krusty Canuck on this beautiful 12th of August, 2020. And as I always say, take care of yourselves, look after your loved ones, and remember, humanity and merit wins the day. Take care. We'll see you next time. Bye for now. Sweetheart, because I am hard, you will not fight me. There is no racial bigotry here.